We adopted Bitcoin in 2021 as a national currency. Through the adoption of Bitcoin, uh, we started realizing that we needed other tools in order to better take advantage of the digital financial innovation and the law of emission of digital assets was created in 2023. This law created what's known as the Commission, the National Commission of Digital Assets, and we became the regulator of full financial digital assets in the country. Technically, the uh, Security Exchange Commission from the United States, but in digital and the supervisor. So I'll be the head regulator of the country. As you've embraced Bitcoin as legal tender, what lessons have you learned regarding the integration of cryptocurrency into a national economy? Yeah, fantastic question. It's like, you know how they tell you, you want to learn a language, move to the country and start speaking it? Well, we wanted to become the best country when it came to digital assets, so we adopted one. And, and sure enough, we started learning how to speak the language. I'd like to, to tell you a narrative, an, an analogy that I use a lot. It's, it's something simple, but it's something that most people miss of what the difference is and, and, and why it is that we're being successful in El Salvador and other countries are having a hard time. If you think, for example, your car that you use every day, it has an engine, turn it on, go point A, point B. If tomorrow you buy an electric car, it does exactly the same thing. So what's gonna happen when your electric car fails, you're gonna bring it to a mechanic. The mechanic opens the hood, there's no engine, there's nothing in there, it's witchcraft, we don't know how this works, but this is your trusted mechanic. And you're like, well, the mechanic should know how to do it, maybe, maybe this is the wrong decision to buy a digi uh, an electric car. So, so in that scenario, your traditional car, your combustion car, is traditional financial products, and the electric car is digital assets. And the mechanic is your regulator. So countries depend on the regulator, like the mechanic, that has for years, sometimes centuries, regulated financial assets. Now the difference, and this is what we learned through the adoption of Bitcoin, is that this is more of a technology quest. This is more of something that you can't just show up to an office with supervisors and, and try to understand the financials. You, you need to understand technology. You need to understand that this works through wallets. You need to understand that this is all in the blockchain. And it has a much greater traceability than fiat money. So that is the big difference in El Salvador. We created a technology solution. Uh, I, I come from the industry and I was appointed president of the commission because of that, because we were trying to solve the issue that internationally is still a riddle. There's a lot of sort of dialogue around crypto globally in terms of people's understanding of crypto. You know, uh, one of the things you hear is, oh, I don't really understand it, I don't understand blockchain, I don't understand crypto. So how have you found the general population's understanding of crypto, what it can do for them, the empowerment it can deliver them, and also the understanding of what they need to do to use it? What's been that journey? So we adopted Bitcoin. One of the greatest successes out of the Bitcoin adoption has been the educational component. We have great uh, projects like Mi Primer Bitcoin that, that has educated now over 60,000 Salvadorians, not just in digital assets or crypto, but in financial education, in understanding what is the problem with the fiat economy, understanding inflation, understanding that sometimes it's not that things are getting more expensive, it's just that our currency is getting devalued. In El Salvador, we're US dollar and Bitcoin. so. The adoption for the use of digital assets has been, I mean, given that Bitcoin is a volatile uh, currency at the moment, the adoption by, by nationals is low, but that's because it just doesn't make sense for a lot of nationals to use Bitcoin in a daily use. I mean, if you're a taxi driver, you accepted a payment for $10 today, and if we're lucky, if you did it three days ago, it'd be worth 10% more today. But in the past, that can be 10 or 20% lower. And for somebody that makes $10 a day or $7 a day, that's not acceptable. So they do understand it. Many do save in Bitcoins, understand the benefit of saving long-term in Bitcoin. And we're growing as a nation. We, 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 we see the value of it. And with the understanding of digital assets, we have now opened the door to create products that will democratize access to financial instruments that before were only accessible to the super rich. So for example, by tokenization of products that pay 10, 15% returns and that are financed by national treasuries or treasuries of big companies, now you have 
people that work, the same taxi driver that makes $10 a day, being able to save $100 and making a 10% return, which in the past, it was non-existent. What regulatory frameworks are you building to ensure the responsible and sustainable growth of the digital asset sector in El Salvador? It's one thing kind of implementing it, but, but how, how are you sort of securing the future for, for Salvadorians? Yeah, great question. So what we've done is El Salvador, we've been at war for about 30 years. Uh, Nayib Bukele, our president, has liberated the country, has cleared the country from gangs. It's been one of the safest countries in the world. So, so, so we're starting to experience a new financial revolution. We, we first, we became with the freedom. I make this caveat that I was born in El Salvador, but I truly feel like I'd be lying to say that I'm Salvadorian because I didn't live through the tragedy of the gang violence, the wars, et cetera. I, I've came back after all that it's done. I've, I've come back to one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been, and I've traveled all over the world. But the reality is that true Salvadorians have lived through all of that. And as a result of that, we started with a very impoverished economy. Because we had an impoverished economy, we didn't have thriving financial industry like the United States or even the neighboring countries have. We didn't have a large crypto community that was developing software. We, we pretty much started with a blank sheet. And because we had this blank sheet, we were able to bring the top minds together from around the world that have worked in financial regulation and say, how do we create the future? How do we create rules in supervision that will allow us to attract the better players? Like Binance, Binance is one of the regulators companies in El Salvador, and we have worked very closely in ensuring that we create a framework that collectively meets the demands in the world regulations. I mean, we have FATF, we have IOSCO that have put ideas or recommendations on how this should work. And, and, and the, the recommendations make sense. I mean, when you talk about anti-money laundering, it, it's, it's one of four biggest priorities. I mean, the president brought all the commissioners, all the ministers publicly and said, if you're stealing, leave now or you're gonna end up in jail because we have a transparent country and we are not gonna tolerate that anymore. So transparency, money laundering, finance, no terrorism is something that we take very seriously in El Salvador. And as a result, it's taken very seriously when we look at companies that we come uh, for approval. We have a very low approval rate, we're only at 30%, and that's because we want companies that are ready to hit the mainstream. When it comes to El Salvador or market, as I mentioned in the past, it's not super rich, but we wanna make sure that whatever products and whatever companies we allow, come to give a benefit to the nation and also to benefit products internationally. The, the theme of this year is momentum. Um, we've got 4,000 people that are, that are coming from all, all over the world to come together. How important is something like Binance Blockchain Week uh, in, in bringing together industry leaders, thought mm -hmm. leaders, users to, to, to share thoughts and insight together? Yeah, no, great question. And, and, and I wrote a, a little blurb before coming here about how, how excited I was to, to, to attend because even yesterday, just the first night landing here, meeting young companies, creating what will be the next Apple, the next Google, and they're here at Binance. They're, they're here because they get their starting financing through a coin they create and they raise money through Binance. Now, this year is like back in the early 2000s being at CES in Las Vegas, the Consumer Electronics Show, where you saw the new technology coming out and you were like, oh my God, I can't wait for this to come out. And I feel like a kid at the candy store. I mean, I was here this morning at 8 a.m. already looking at the companies coming in, talking to them and finding out what they're doing because I wanna see which ones are mature enough for them to come to El Salvador and work with us and, 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 and grow a base in El Salvador. What excites you most about crypto? I mean, you know, it's still so nascent, even though there's been incredibly large strides. Um, but what do you see in terms of the, the potential and the possibilities that lie ahead for El Salvador? Look, I'm a Bitcoin at our heart. I started mining and working with Bitcoin in 2013. The whole solution of decentralization, the whole fact that you don't need to trust somebody in order to pay somebody. You don't have to have an intermediary. You can actually just transact and remove all geographical barriers. The dream of being part of a borderless or geographical borderless world can be achieved through crypto. And I see it and I'm excited about it. 
And, and we're doing it in El Salvador, which is fantastic. What needs to be done to drive forward crypto adoption globally? What, what, what is lacking? I think that, I mean, adoption in general, I mean, and we go back to, to, to the example that I gave you about the electric car. Why was Tesla so successful? You have to give people something that works exactly the same way than what they're used to. And that's what we're striving for in El Salvador. As Bitcoiners, as Bitcoin country, one of my missions, personal mission, is, is to develop products that will allow us to do that, to really use layer two tools to allow us to use Bitcoin for massive adoption. But the biggest challenge is how do we find the companies, and this is one of the reasons I'm here in uh, Binance Blockchain Week, how do we find companies that are mature enough and are ready to bring to market that can work as easy and transparent as the regular financial products that we're used to. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for mass adoption will take place when people don't realize they have adopted it. When it actually works and it reduces settlement times, it reduces a thousand different costs. If you look at the traditional financial industry, just to make one transfer from me to you, it goes to three or four, sometimes even five intermediaries. And, and those are costs. Through blockchain technology, through crypto, that's instantaneous. There is no middle person and it just works. So once the products get to that stage, mass adoption will take place, but it won't take place because people understand it or people want it. It will take place because it makes sense. Because it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs>